The last time that I was with Carrie, we were sitting in Korea talking about Animorphs. What? Stop. With Kat. So. I think about that all the time. I can't believe, like, I had no idea what Animorphs was about. And to have that explained to me in detail from first book to last, I was just, <laughs> my mind melted. Like, I would have never assumed that plot was within those covers. So this is very on brand for us, what we're doing now. Yes. Unhinged. Okay. Oh, very unhinged. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm scared, but I'm ready. <laughs> we are your three favorite booksellers my name is carlos i'm rose and i'm lauren and today we are joined by carrie also known as carrie can read on bookstagram booktube welcome all the book welcome. places thank you thank you for having me what what are we talking about today guys <sighs> <sighs> Well, I have been anticipating this, all right? Uh -huh. Today, we are going to, I wouldn't say it's a deep dive, but we are diving into Zodiac Academy. Unfortunately. <laughs> you have been selected to attend Zodiac Academy, where your star sign defines your destiny. If you're one of the fae, elemental magic is in your blood, and apparently it's in ours. As twins born in the month of Gemini, we're a rare breed, even in this academy of supernatural a-holes. Changelings were outlawed hundreds of years ago, but I guess our birth parents didn't get the memo. I'm so sorry. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I can't do this. I Please really... keep going. I'm eating it up. <laughs> <sighs> Which means we're totally unprepared for the ruthless world of Fae. Yeah, I would say so. I would say so. Air, fire, water, earth. No one has ever harnessed all four of them until we arrived. No. As the rarest elementals ever known, we're already a threat to the four celestial heirs, the popular, vindictive bullies who happen to be some of the hottest guys I've ever seen. It doesn't uh, help that they're the please. most dangerous beasts in the academy and probably on Earth. Our fates are intertwined. They've only got until the lunar eclipse to force us out, and they'll stop at nothing to succeed. We can't expect any help from the faculty when it comes to defending ourselves. <laughs> so if the dragon shifters want some target practice, the wolves want somebody to hunt, or the vampires fancy a snack, then we have to be ready. Today's horoscope? Totally screwed. Why I'm was that so long? <laughs> <laughs> that summary has more plot than the first three books. <laughs> Indeed. I would say that is the first three books. Mm -hmm. Summarize. That is, you could just read that and you know exactly what happened. The first three books in two weeks, span of two weeks. The thing is though, like it could have potential. Like reading that, I would be like, because I came off of reading this, I came right off of reading Crave, which was also just like hilarious. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but like, in a way, it was so funny. And so when I was reading this, I was thinking, oh, okay, we're getting on another ride. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> and then it was just, it was just not a good time. This was pitched to me as like a sexy Harry Potter. Oh. Where? <laughs> <laughs> I have a screenshot from, I think it's Caroline Peckham's website or it's the other author, the other sister. Suzanne. It says, yes. If Voldemort ran Hogwarts, you'd get Zodiac Academy. And there is a photo. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going with it. They really are. Which is so dumb because the only, like, faculty member, dare I say, that had any sort of, like, sympathy towards these twins was Principal Nova, and she is nothing like Voldemort. So, oh, the plot holes from just even her pitch. Her elevator pitch is just <laughs> wrong. So, on Goodreads, book one has a 3.94 with 94,000 ratings. <laughs> 
Book two has a 4.31 with 73,000 ratings. And book three has a 4.41 with 67,000 ratings. Almost 68,000. That is wild. I don't know how they all have over four. My theory is that the the ratings get higher because the only people who continue yes. the series are like diehards. Yeah. Yes. There's <laughs> no way. There, uh, 100%. Oh. I will give a special mention right off the bat to fellow bookseller Crystal. We would not be here without her. She is the one that sold us into this series. And oh, no. God, the way I wanted to stop. But here we are. <laughs> it's like her favorite thing in the world. Crystal, don't worry if you're listening, if you're watching. I'm here to fight for you, girl. Okay. <laughs> I'm here. I mean, I will try my best. I was having a hard time with books one through three. But I'm here to fight for her. <laughs> okay. Right. Right, right, right. I think all of us except for Rose collectively stopped at book three, right? Oh, yeah. But... I will say that after finishing book three, I might continue. Oh. <laughs> the ending of book three kind of got me. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Let's break down some of these main characters. Um, okay. First and foremost, the twins that I'm convinced is just one person. Oh, yeah. I'm 100%. convinced that, You're right. <laughs> that she's just bamboozling all of us and that there is actually just one person throughout this whole thing. Agreed. <laughs> they were trying to make it seem that one twin was like more of a badass than the other, but every chance she got, the one mm -hmm. that was supposedly mm -hmm. more like sensitive and whatever, would still like semi stand up for herself and be like, no, wh who are you? Mm -hmm. Which one are you? Can these twins have differences, please? For the love of God, other than this blue hair trauma. Yeah. The difference is one has blue hair and one likes motorcycles. And that's their entire personality. <laughs> I don't know if you can really see a difference in their actions until maybe like book four, book five. <laughs> to to be a good book, it just can't come to book four. You know, it just can't. Yeah, especially when the books are also hundreds and hundreds and hundreds yeah. of pages. If it was like a 300 page book, maybe these are like 500, 600 pages. <laughs> Or even if, like, the first book was really bad, but the second book was, like, great. Then I would have an easier time selling the series to people and being like, yeah, the first book, just you got to get through it. But the second book, oh, my God. But no, instead people are like, oh, man, but book five. And I'm like, that is... 2,500 pages yeah. away. <laughs> no one has that time. <laughs> it's also weird to me how they're written so similarly. Aren't each, isn't each sister written by a different author? Like one sister writes the perspectives of one. I feel like that's yeah. how they split it. And if that's so, then I just find it so weird that it's like the same character. I don't know whether that's adorable that they're like sisters and have such a similar writing style or if I'm like, maybe y'all should just get someone else to write the other sister. Third party. They might need some of that. <laughs> some some editing in there too. It's spell check. Spell <laughs> check. Oh, I was getting so mad. I did want to do an honorable mention for just a two little quotes here quiet as air quiet as air that's a good one <laughs> clumsy as a brick arguably bricks are pretty sturdy i would say <laughs> never heard that simile um mm -hmm. but never once i can't even defend that no i have read through book seven i am one of those okay <laughs> and i was trying to take notes on book one through three and i was having a hard time finding points to defend <laughs> that's because you have taste sometimes a little bit <laughs> listen i do i love a trashy book i love hate reading you know i was really trying hard i was like i'm gonna advocate for the people that really like this me i can't there's no defending books one through three did anyone have like a favorite character sophie didn't bother me or Geraldine. Geraldine. Yeah, yeah, Geraldine. I would say, yeah. I love Geraldine. What was she a Cerberus? Cerberus. Yeah, she's a Cerberus. She reminded me of. Did you guys watch Dairy Girls? 
<gasps> yes. Did not. No. She reminded me of like the annoying. I forget her name, but you know who I'm talking about. Yes. So yes. I, I pictured her as that, like the head girl the whole time. So Amazing. I had a really good time with Geraldine. What I do love about Geraldine too is Rose gave me the spoiler that eventually her and Max get together. Okay. It is a journey. <laughs> yeah. What? Of course. <laughs> it's got to be like the bully falls in love with his victim question mark. I mean, that's this whole book. Do we want to know how it happens? I mean, yeah. I would want to know. <laughs> All right. Well, so in, I believe it's book three, the like full moon or something or the eclipse happens, right? Yeah. And so during that time, Max and Geraldine hook up. And after that, Max is pining for Geraldine. And Geraldine is like, boy, bye. I don't even like you. Get your fishy parts away from me. Oh. And <laughs> literally, she'll – the nickname she comes up for him, I'm dead. And eventually, he's like professing his love for her. And she's like, you know what? I think I love you too. I think he does something heroic or something like that. And they are in love. Wow. There's also another another couple later down in the line that book one you would have never suspected. Our gay romance? Yes, Caleb and Seth. Okay. I mean, I feel like they hinted at it enough with their like little threesome that they had. In the third book, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Caleb was like, well, there was another girl there. And Seth was like, yeah, but you barely paid attention to her. And I was like- Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so our heirs, our, our little- right. Celestial heirs, Max, mm -hmm. Seth, Darius, and Caleb. Who's your favorites? Caleb. I love Caleb. Mine is Darius A. Crux, which Boo. if you told me in book one, listen, <laughs> I'm I'm here fighting for my life, guys. <laughs> I hated book one. I hated him for a while. And then there was one day that I just looked at the book and I said, you know what? I might love him. That's my piece. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I would say maybe Caleb as well, because I feel like he was the first one to be like, wait, I don't want to be bad. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. was like, okay, you turned around first, so I'll give you the tiniest brownie point. He was the only one that had like a sliver of a character development. He moved an inch, an inch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he was like, hmm. Almost murdering them seems a little bit much. And I'm like, you don't say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. I also have a question. Was it ever explained why Orion takes them to Solaria to begin with? <laughs> I feel like it's I don't think so. the biggest plot hole <laughs> in this book is for him to be like, you guys are the chosen ones. Come with me. And I'm actually going to coerce you force you into coming <laughs> they get there and he's like get the fuck out and i'm like why why bring them true he's like i hate you but i brought you here <laughs> that's true like it's never explained who gave him that job he yeah. said someone though like as soon as they turned 18 that they're like magical i don't know sensors i don't know what they would be called but they're tingles. Yeah, they're, they're spidey senses. <laughs> and like, Orion, why do you just have this collection of newspaper clippings of their babies? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, that's hilarious because I forgot all that happened. I didn't question it, but now that that's truly like the that's only true. way that they could start the story, I guess. But literally the second they get there, he's like, but get the fuck out of here. We don't want you. <laughs> like, it's my job to kill you and, like, make sure that you never get your thrones or whatever. Right? <gasps> what? How confusing. That's probably, like, a book nine nugget that Rose will have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Trust me, I will. <laughs> Thank you. I also think that it's really interesting that they – so specifically made this they're all 18 plus they don't act it at all like this is 100 percent these like high, high school. school kids but they were like so specific but i'm like these boys are acting like this and they're in their 20s no 
If I ever in my 20s did like hashtag muff scruff, hashtag oh my gosh, the muff scruff. <laughs> go home vega losers, please take me out back and shoot me. Like just put me out of my <laughs> okay. misery. Fair. The Faye book was funny at first, but then I was like, please, please. Griffaria? Stop. Gr- Griffonaria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Griffonaria. That's what it was. <laughs> I hated Facebook at first. I was like, Mm -hmm. tongue in cheek, that's silly, whatever. And then it was a nuisance because I'm like, then faculty sexually harassing students on online. Disgusting. And why Washer? Everyone else gets this cool ass name. Like Orion's pretty cool. Professor Pyro's cringe, but yeah, Nova. And then we get Washer. My wife, dryer. (laughs) (laughs) Just so bad. It made me physically angry. (laughs) Would you guys be a part of the ass club? I don't know if I'd be a part of the club, but I'd probably be like on their side, just not outwardly. Yeah. I feel like hopefully I'd be like an anti-monarchist. And I'd have my own club of like, Ooh. screw the heirs and screw these twins because <laughs> this is ridiculous. But who knows? In order to survive the academy, you got to pick a side. So Yeah, I suppose. Well, and then there's another group that comes in, the the whores. There's two. The whores? The whores. <laughs> the, the super explicit group, the cunts. Oh, what? what? There's no way they actually wrote this. I don't remember what it stands for because I think it's in like book six, I think. Oh my God. But yeah, the Ass Society, Whores, and Cunts. And that is. (laughs) (laughs) You can't tell me that that's literature. You just can't. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm not saying this is good writing or good storytelling, but I'm obsessed, so. Oh. Rose, I'm so disappointed in you. <laughs> I know. Listen, I have tried every time I've I've hung out with Lauren, I have tried to explain this book series and explain why I like it. But every time I explain it, it actually makes it worse. Even me writing this down, I'm like, why am I obsessed? Why is this addicting? All of my pros and all of my cons were the same, I will say. <laughs> You hated and liked all the same things? Cons, cringy. Pros, cringy. Cons, bad Spanglish. Pros, oh, bad my Spanglish. God, the Spanglish. <laughs> it was awful and it got worse. <laughs> oh my God. It was pissing me off. Doesn't he become an evil character? Yes, I Googled it. He's a nymph. He's a nymph. Yeah. So it's like you did him so dirty. You Google translated random (laughs) stuff and then you make him an evil person. The Google Translate was, it was obvious, even for people that don't speak Spanish, like you can just read that and see. When he said, hey, is everything bien? I, (laughs) he was like, chicas, is everything bien? This isn't proper Spanish saying this school is muy clicky or I'm muy not clicky. those idiotas. Boy, no. Or the bastardos. I was like, who says that? No one says that. And the fact that there was one point where he said like the rumors going around are locos. And I was like, you passed <laughs> up an opportunity to say chisme. Like, Everyone I know knows cheese. Mm-hmm. You don't need to say the rumors are locos. Like, <laughs> oh, I just want to know, like, why did they think that that needed to be in there? Like, was that what was the point? That was their diverse character. Their one diverse character. Well, no, because Max. Oh, yeah, Max. Uh-huh. Well, and that was also a problematic line because they were like, oh, Max and his dark skin. I just want to touch his hair. Ew, Ew, I don't even remember that. <laughs> it's when they first see all the heirs and they're like describing them or whatever. And they see Max and they're like, oh my gosh, I just want to touch his hair. I'm like, ew, stop. Ew. Oh my gosh. 
gross. Listen, I I hated book one so much. Mm-hmm. Did I continue hate reading and then eventually stop hate reading it? Yes. For someone who has read more of this book, we get so much work put into giving us the backstory of the boys, which like yes. tells us why they're bullies. Mm-hmm. Do any of the bitchy girls get a backstory <laughs> for why they're bitches? Because I don't think they do. Are they just bitches by birth? We get no explanation. <laughs> they <laughs> they also get worse. Oh, God. How is that even possible? <sighs> it's possible. And it happened. They don't have any type of backstory or development. They don't change their ways. I just feel like this is sort of a trend in like especially veering towards darker fantasy romance is especially when the authors are women, they put so much work into constructing these male characters that are so complex. And then the women are just like, they are who they are. Like yeah. they're bitchy, they're bitchy. They're great, they're great. It was like so obvious in this one because we went from like horrible bullies to like, oh, Darius is my fave, you know? Mm-hmm. But what was her name? Kylie the Capricorn. I'm salty. Lauren's favorite. <laughs> yeah, she was like, Ugh. I'm just angry. I'm so angry. <laughs> is she born with it? Is it Maybelline? We'll never know. We have no clue. And you know what? What really just mm. reading the part when they're <laughs> in Orion's. <laughs> I already know what's coming up. Oh, no. They're in Orion's class, and he, of course, has to address her as Miss Major. And right next to her is her (laughs) fucking friend where he's like, oh, her friend always in her shadow, Miss Minor. No. (laughs) I totally skipped over that. What? (laughs) Major and Minor. There's no way that someone wrote this down and they were like, that's good. I'm going to keep that Mm -hmm. in. Publish. Girls, ladies, please. I don't, I think they really just wrote it and published it. Because I think this, wasn't this self-published originally? I think it still is, right? Mm Mm-hmm. All the publishers are like, fuck that. No, No. thank you. They're like, it's doing fine. They don't need our help because we don't want our name on that. And I had a couple of people because like I made a video ranting about this and I had a lot of people commenting that they're much more into astrology than I am. And like they're tr- the authors are trying so hard to reference the sky and stuff like that, like with minor and major, that could be like Ursa minor and major. Yeah. But apparently oh. it's all wrong. Like how we have <laughs> all of these names like Orion Nova, even Vega, like all of their names have something to do with like the constellations, but they're Mm -hmm. they don't make any sense. If they just put like a little bit of time into researching astrology, they could have made it a thing. But apparently it's just like they took kind of like with Spanish, they put every Spanish word that they knew in the book. Yeah. They put every star thing that they put they knew in the book. It's just random garbage it's garbage that makes it even better for me i love the lack of research they no put into it. Stop. <laughs> bad and also i feel like there's zodiac um sign or whatever it has nothing to do with the story like it doesn't it doesn't add anything to the story it's just it's just there mm-hmm. and in book one there was some sagittarius debacle with the sign like not being on the cover Every book is missing a different sign on the front. It's because the circle is like the map. It is actually how the Zodiac map is. And they just like didn't design the cover well. So on every book, they kind of move the circle. And so the huge title emblem is blocking one of the signs. They could have just (laughs) moved it down an inch and they could still show all the signs but they decided uh, that wasn't what they wanted and it it doesn't like, love have it. anything to do with the plot <laughs> it's literally a design flaw i love what a mess all of it <laughs> is they really said you know what sister we're going to write a book no thoughts <laughs> Just vibes. <laughs> yeah. No thoughts, just vibes. And I'm convinced one of them must have like fucked their teacher. And this is just like their truth story. This is a memoir. <laughs> this is another memoir. Another bio. It's one thing to have a student teacher trope 
fine. If you're going to do it, do uh-huh. it. But uh, her calling him sir every chance that she could get, disgusting. But- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would have just loved to have been in like the writing room with them of like if if they were doing it where one of the sisters would go off and write a bit and then come back with a bit of the plot. Did the other sister ever read it and be like, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Or did they just make a pact to like, listen, sis, whatever you write, I will support you and we're going to build off of it. Let's go along with it. They have the same writing style. So they read each other's parts and they were like, Mm, yes, we did it again. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite what the fuck moment is the twins are just like getting to the school. They're realizing how magical everything is. They're walking the class and they see a beautiful Pegasus. Oh my God, it's out in the wild. Like, let's go up to it. And the Pegasus is like nuzzling into them, surprisingly <laughs> into her titties. And they're like, oh my God, it like likes me. This is so crazy. Just like <laughs> petting. And Sophia's like, hey, Tyler, cut it out. <laughs> and then Tyler just fucking morphs back into a person and the girls are like did we just get sexually assaulted was this man just nuzzling his head into my boobies he sure was the direct quote is molested by a horse-faced weirdo is that the line? line oh my god i had to put the book down for a couple hours after that that was a scene that was a scene mm-hmm but my least favorite, I think this was book two, Seth pees on oh my gosh, Tori yes! or Darcy, oh. <laughs> and then he leaves, yeah. and then his pack does too. Yeah, that was crazy. I have that as one of my cons for book two, just <laughs> Seth pissing on Tori. I had somebody comment on my video. They were like, the fact that I didn't react at all to the fact that he peed on her just shows how insane the rest of the book was. It, that's yeah. <laughs> didn't even bat an eye like, oh, he peed on her? Yeah, that tracks. That's not even like bad compared to what it's other not, things that they did. Not at all. So yeah, reading that, you're just like, oh, another t- it's another Tuesday at Zodiac, isn't it? Yeah. Just an average Tuesday. I feel like... My entire experience of reading book one was what the hell. (laughs) I hated it. I was like, why is this romance? Where is the romance happening? Nowhere. And I noticed actually a lot of people were saying this, that it was very – like it gave Winx Club vibes. Yes. I was like – I, yes, I think I told you that, Lauren, Mm. that I was like, this is very Winx. (laughs) Well, isn't Solaria – like, Solaria is a world in Winx. Yes. Yes. Oh. It's the spinoff. And Tori Vega. Tori Vega victorious. Oh. These authors. And Carlos and I actually read Crave. Uh-huh. Vega. <laughs> Must yeah. be relation to the Hudson and Jackson, Jackson with an X. Oh, is that also Vega in Crave? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dare I say Crave better than this series? A hundred percent. I did like Crave better. And I hated Crave. (laughs) I did not like Crave. Same. I feel like I like Crave more looking back, thinking about it. Yeah. (laughs) Because it was just so funny. They were not good books. But compared to Zodiac, so good. (laughs) I wasn't ready for the level of... That is Zodiac. Mm -hmm. It was pitched to me wrong. If Mm -hmm. I was told that this was a dark fantasy with heavy bullying, then I would have, first of all, not read it. Second of all, Mm -hmm. I would have been prepared for what was to come. But calling this a romance is a stretch if I've ever Mm -hmm. heard one. And even calling it bullying Like, it wasn't bullying. It was sexual assault. Like, call it for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm currently doing a, like, reading experiment of reading Guild. Have you heard of this? Yeah, I have. For that book, there's a huge content warning at the end of, like, what you just read in the beginning, like, the Goodreads Mm -hmm. summary. 
there's a huge content warning at the end that is very specific. Like there is unconsensual sex, like stuff like that. So I checked on Zodiac Academy and the content warning at the bottom is like, this is a bully trope romance. It's like if Voldemort was at hot, like <laughs> ruled Hogwarts, whatever. And, and like compared to Zodiac, Guild is nothing. Like the smut, yeah. whatever, nothing. But Zodiac is 100% sexual assault on every page and it's like that's not oh i kind of blamed the tiktok girlies for being like this is such a fun romance yeah it's the authors too the authors are really underselling what's in this book and i think that that's like a little dangerous a little not cool caroline no, for sure and susan yeah that was my big thing with one is that i felt like there were so many non-consensual acts happening even the one scene with Caleb and Tori in the classroom even that Mm -hmm. what is happening I would not put this in the romance section I Mm -hmm. would not uh, it was not what I was expecting I feel like if you expect okay this is not a romance book it's just like I don't know dark fantasy maybe yeah it would be better but I think the fact that it is marketed as romance is not a good call And I felt like it was marketed a little bit as YA. It gave off to me, like even just the title, it felt very YA vibes. Maybe just because it said Academy. If it said maybe Empire Academy. (laughs) I don't know, like University or like 18 Mm. plus Academy. Oh, it originally had another name. According to Goodreads, I don't know. It was called Supernatural Beasts and Bullies. That was the original name. Got a ring to it. (laughs) I don't know if that's better, (laughs) but... (laughs) Not beasts and bullies. See, at least that sounds like what it is. It sounds like it's a cringy bully attempt at smut. I'm being lied to. Everyone's being lied to. True. Because I feel like (laughs) readers and writers do tropes for their own reasons. Like people who have been assaulted, sometimes like writing about their assault. Mm -hmm. is therapeutic or whatever so like i'm not gonna yuck anybody's yum if like they enjoy reading or writing that stuff right the thing that bothered me is just that it was marketed so incorrectly if you talk badly about it people are sort of like well you don't understand like blah 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 but it's like uh (laughs) hey i have bad things to say about it too i won't say this is a work of art (laughs) yeah even with my review for for book one that was my whole thing i was like this is awful. These men are terrible. Like, but I do like torturing myself. And that is Mm -hmm. why I continued on. (laughs) And I will say there are some more scenes, not particularly with the heirs, but it's like with the villain, the antagonist of the book eventually, Mm -hmm. that even he goes through something as well. I'll just say it because we're all here. And if you're listening, we've already given you spoilers. But (laughs) Lionel, eventually um, Darius's dad, he's basically sexually assaulted by the Shadow Princess. And I'm just, oh yeah, you don't know about the Shadow Princess. (laughs) Book four, book four and five. Okay. And I'm just like, I know we're supposed to hate him, but that was awful to read. I kept going, but even then I was like, why? What was the point of that? Disappointed. Characters need to have something redeeming about them. And mm-hmm. it was just so, especially book one, I know I know things come later for the heirs to make you try to like them. Sure. In the first book, there's literally nothing redeeming any of these men Mm -mm. (laughs) there's like zero happiness i just remember being so sad reading this book i'm like these girls can't catch a break they never do (sighs) one of the scenes that stuck out to me the most was the scene with washer the siren teacher he's like hey ladies how you how you like in school and they're like Oh, you know, it's really hard. They break down, go off on this tangent about how hard their life is. They aren't liking the academy because everyone's so mean to them. And he's just like, oh, yeah, that was a good little session. Let's do that again if you guys ever (laughs) want to blow off some steam. Yeah, and he was like being all gross. And I just remember being so A, angry, and B, sad because I'm like, there, is there happiness in this book at all for them? No. Mm-mm. 
Apparently, Crystal has told me, okay, at the end of book eight. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to what you just said. <laughs> 5,000 pages later. Yes, we see some happiness. Eventually, I guess they do become queens and everybody bows down and I guess then they're happy, but I don't know. I think they get kidnapped again, so. <laughs> yeah. With that being said, it ends unhappy. But apparently book nine should end in happily ever after. Maybe. Uh, uh, Maybe. And apparently these authors wrote like a book series in this world previously. Like they have another series that apparently is this like Zodiac Academy, but just like a prequel. Yes, I think they have one and it's in a different academy. Oh God. The one that the one that sucks at whatever that ball game is. With all criminals and like all this shit. Yeah, Crystal was telling me about it. They make it obvious that there are so many other like academies. Why didn't these girls transfer? <laughs> I think Zodiac Academy is supposed to be the most like prestigious one it's and the they have best. to graduate from that oh. one in order to claim their throne or their heir or whatever. Wow, we found the one plot point that doesn't have a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> Reading book two gave me a little bit of hope for the rest of the series, but book two should have come way sooner. They could have cut the first half of book one and then merged book two, like the last half of book two, and that should have been book one. It still would have had the bullying, but then it would have had redemption of them being like, mm -hmm. okay. This is just how Faye are. She's just being Miley. <laughs> <laughs> She's just Miley. It would come into this full circle moment of like, okay, well, if they're going to be assholes, then we're going to be assholes. But the fact mm -hmm. that that doesn't happen till the second book. Yeah. Too many pages. Too many pages. And also the, the whole last part of the first book, is that really important? That one professor that like was telling them about the shadow, like he just kind of was introduced, sent a couple of Fae book messages and then was killed. It felt like that was going to be such a bigger thing. And I know that like the shadow princess, like that eventually comes, but I felt it was just so much and why. I will say that doesn't even connect until... <laughs> Book five. Book seven. Oh. <laughs> book, no, not book seven. Book five. We find that God. someone, I think the twins' long lost brother had some type of course. <gasps> oh, yeah. They've got a long lost Wait, brother guy. What? <laughs> yes. Um, he has some uh, type of what? correspondence. Please. They're just pulling shit out of their ass now. <laughs> I can't. Was Gabriel introduced in book one through three? No. I've never no. heard that name. That's the brother, guys. Is he dead? He's not dead. He's alive. He does not have the same father. Okay. He's not the son of the Savage King, but they have the same mom. And I don't know if he was like given away or what. I don't remember. I think he was raised until like the parents died and then he was sent off. But that professor that was murdered, he was corresponding with him too. Astrum, right? Yep. Now, do I remember why? I don't. <laughs> but <laughs> there was a connection. I don't know if it completely filled the plot holes, but it put a little bit of something in there. Because he, he got turned into a burnt chicken nugget like so fast. He did the like, I knew your mother. We were such good friends and then gone. Murder. <laughs> Murder. <laughs> Carlos, you said that you kind of liked book two though, right? Yes. Well, I liked their little like redemption, like how when they were getting back at all the boys mm -hmm. with like the fleas and burning his, uh, there is his room, stuff like that. Like I thought that was pretty cool. Like I enjoyed that part of it. And I also enjoyed mm -hmm. the ending, the whole fight scene in the arena or whatever. Yeah, that was dope. Yeah. It was weird that they threw them into a pit for no reason. Yeah. Oh, right. Because then I they just get that. out of the pit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, the fight scene was cool, at least. When they held hands and they like blasted fire. I don't know what it was. It was like blue fire, right? Very like twitches. special dragon fire. Twitches. Yes. Very twitches. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I feel like everything that these books are is very like if you combine Disney Channel witch movies with ABC Family uh, Freeform free movies and shows. CW. CW. Yeah, yes. Oh, CW. you got to add the CW in there. This is 
come on. <laughs> but even, even like their little hijinks felt very like parent trap twins versus oh, Meredith. Yes. Oh, yeah. You know? They weren't even like, damn, you got him. It was like, let's give him fleas. Let's mm-hmm. put a, a Pegasus um, sex true. doll in his room. <laughs> this man tried to kill you. What? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I... Kind of makes sense because they don't have the power to fight back at the time, you know? So they had to work with what they have. Maybe. But like Pegasus sex doll is really all they could get. I mean, they're not the brightest. They're the most powerful, not the most intelligent. <laughs> that is right. a fact. <laughs> the burning down Darius's room was cool. But also that he was like, how could you? Oh my God, I'm so angry. Once he finds out, you tried to kill her. You put her in a frozen <laughs> pool. Orion's like, shut the fuck up. Oh, you took my little sword. It's like, calm down. <laughs> BFFR, Darius. <laughs> oh, Xavier, though. I love Xavier. Our lilac Pegasus. His little scene with Tori when she <gasps> finds out. And he's just, yeah, that was so cute. Mm-hmm. Does he die, Rose? Xavier does not die, um, but he... He aids in the cringiness of – you guys remember, I've told you, Carrie, you'll be hearing for the first time, mm-hmm. there is some dejazzling that happens. Mm. So he's very much alive and well, um, and he is trying to find his love and his place in the world as a Pegasus, and he decides to dejazzle his stick. Mm-hmm. That's what's going on with, with Xavier. <laughs> but isn't there – like? Correct me if I'm wrong. Some I think somebody said this in the comments when I was asking, pleading for the rest of the plot. <laughs> um, don't they kind of talk about like essentially conversion therapy? Like doesn't the dad try? He tries, yes. Yeah. To try to convert him into thinking he is a dragon. Yeah. And it's really sad actually. I think I just blacked that out of my brain. I'm traumatized. That's got to be triggering for readers. Yeah, the whole book is triggering. The whole <laughs> book is triggering. Really, the whole series, yeah. And there's not a trigger warning in sight. Not what, except for, I'm sorry, you're going to put a trigger warning for a bully romance and describe it as Voldemort being at the Academy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I was like, who do you think you are? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> You cannot compare this book to Voldemort and get away with it. You can't get away with that. (laughs) Also, the Tyler Sophia romance. No. Yeah, I don't like it. No, Tyler was awful. Let's go back to my moment that I hated where he literally... (laughs) Horse-faced weirdo. (laughs) You're right, actually. (laughs) And he's the most active on Facebook and has the worst hashtags in the world. (laughs) And we're just going to allow him to be adorable with Sophia? No. He super sucks. He does suck. Yeah, I didn't like him. I wish I could go into this without the other books in my brain because I'm just like, he gets better. His hashtags improve. Oh, his hashtags get worse. (laughs) (laughs) They get worse. They're literally, there's a point in one of the books where they are like in hiding from Lionel. They're all down in a bunker and he still finds a way to like message on their atlases and it's still hashtag central. But he is now in a thruple. No way. Guess who it is? Who's our other Pegasus daddy? Xavier. Oh. (laughs) Interesting. My head hurts. I'm getting a nosebleed. It is a ride. And I'm not off of it, but I am dizzy and in pain. (laughs) I don't think I've actually stopped being in pain after reading any of these. Yet here Mm -hmm. you are. On book eight. I love the torture. I have a question. Did they ever stop the excessive use of using humping as like a way to describe something? Because mouth humping? Oh, no, no, no. I feel like Seth constantly uses humping i don't know if it ever gets better probably not because he's obsessed he's obsessed with humping anything cuddling orgies Orgies. (laughs) needs to survive off of orgies because normal Mm -hmm. i guess if you're an alpha 
Also, can we talk about why book three was over 500 pages when it's only <laughs> one week? <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck? That is a thing. I do not that get happens. it. And why, if nymphs are their sworn enemies, why is it not taught until they're at Zodiac Academy on how to defend yourselves against them? Until they're attacked. Why are you grown adults when you learn how to defend yourself? That what? Mm -hmm. Like, why are we not learning this as kids? No world building. There really wasn't. I was just picturing this as like a regular city. That was one of the things I hated the most was that there was no world building. That's my favorite part about fantasy is learning about the world, you know, like the history, the religion, the magic. And there was none of that in this. That's too much depth. Eventually in book seven or six, oh, maybe. I'm telling you, <laughs> of course. everyone says it. I'm going to be the one to say it too. Book five. <laughs> uh, I understand why people have let go, but I can too. I, I get it. You get no, no history or backstory really until I would say book five. Don't really know where people come from. We still don't know about the Savage King and the Queen, like their parents. So, do they go into what made him so savage? Yes. Actually, he wasn't even the bad guy. Lionel Acrux was controlling him with the shadows. Of course. Wait, so is in that an analogy with Harry Potter, is Lionel. Voldemort? Lionel is for sure Voldemort. He is definitely Voldemort. He is also the one that killed the Vega twins' parents. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. And they were the twins who lived. Okay. The twins who lived have come to die. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Wait, wait, wait. Then who's the spare that they kill? Diego. Diego's the spare. Oh, yeah. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Oh. <laughs> Or how about when we find out all these things about Max, right? That he's illegitimate and yeah. one of the twins finally gets the upper hand and he's like, oh God, she must ask for something for this information, right? No, not even a, can you stop torturing me? Can you, can you ease up a little bit? No, she's just like, secret's safe with me, buddy. Don't worry about it. I'm like, mm -hmm. these twins are the dumbest of the dumb. Like I said. <laughs> Whoever was with Darius when they find out about Xavier, I probably would have kept that one to my chest only because Boring. I like Xavier. Yeah. But for the Max secret, I'm saying something, anything. I'm telling Tyler so he can go put it on Facebook. Have no fear. I got you. I'm like, how is that deserved? He's the main one. He's why everybody knows about their trauma. And it's it's not written in a way of like, that's them being nice. It's not them being like, a good moral mm -hmm. person in keeping the secret. It's literally just, they just don't. Just silly, goofy Tori. <laughs> no. <laughs> Some of the bullying that was actually kind of funny was like. Not the bullying being I funny. I know. <laughs> You'll understand why with this quote. It's, look who it isn't. Seth's voice hit my ears. Look who it isn't. <laughs> Tell me that's not something a uh, five-year-old has said to you. Like, please. Uh, I'm looking through all my notes and I'm just getting so aggravated right now. Go out, fuck yourself. That one was good. That one was pretty good. I wish I highlighted when I was first reading this. Yeah, me too. Because all I have is hated it. <laughs> that's all I have <laughs> for book one. I had another question for book two, my mid-book two thoughts. Is this book self-aware? I was like, do they know that they're doing this or do they think this is good? They have to think it's good. Well, by book six, I mean, it took a while. I was like, maybe they are self-aware because I don't know how you would write some of these things and take yourself seriously. Because mm -hmm. everyone else isn't. You've got the little diehardies, but I want to mark myself safe from Zodiac Academy yeah. as a whole. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> safe. Because also, haven't these been published? Like, the first one was just published a couple years ago, right? Like, they're churning these out. 2019. So they haven't even really gotten kind of feedback. Sometimes you see in series, like, I get the feeling that authors will write 
for how the fans have reacted previously. Mm -hmm. But they're just kind of full speed ahead. I don't know if they've even really registered like what the fandom has become. It's so interesting to me. I would love to pick their brains, but also I would not. They have a dedication at the end of one of the books. Did we guys crush your soul? Are you absolutely destroyed by the end of this book? Oh my God. They're very active on TikTok. And I think that's where they're getting most of their feedback. And everyone on TikTok loves these books. But like they don't love it in like a, oh, I know that these are bad. They love it in like a, this is great. Yeah. (laughs) A masterpiece. (laughs) Yeah, that these are masterpieces. But I think, I think it's book five that they literally at the end, they're like, are you crushed yet? And I was like, I mean, I am. I'm my stomach hurts, <laughs> but <laughs> did you guys um guess what their orders were gonna be? I thought they were gonna be something like super brand new. Yeah, that's what I thought so too. I did like that they were phoenixes. Rising from the ashes. I liked the scene where they were like falling and then their wings like sprout or whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That was cool. I thought that they were gonna make them dragons so that Darius could marry Mm. the one. Yeah, I thought that too. Because do they get married even? Darcy or Darcy and Darius? (laughs) Tori. Oh. Tori and Darius do in fact get married. Wow. Because what I, I thought that like book eight ended with Darius probably maybe dying. Oh, he died in book seven. Oh. (laughs) Wait, not the gate. Oh, sorry, Carlos. (laughs) Darius dies. No way. Wait, maybe it does get good then. No, because he, because he comes back. He is. He does not stay dead. Never mind then. That is also one of my least favorite tropes. Is whenever they kill a main character but then revive them, and I'm like, just. Let them stay dead. Let me be heartbroken. Yeah. I want to feel that. Like, don't just bring them back. But yeah, Tori drags him back from the afterlife in book eight, I think. Damn, if he died and stayed dead, that would have been good. Right? I love when main characters die. That is just not on brand for these authors, is it? <laughs> nope. <laughs> they were like, we could make it really good, but let's not. Yes, and there's a point where, so Darcy is possessed by some shadow curse. I don't know. Um, But she, like, is ripping out Geraldine's throat. Oh, Geraldine's fine. She's alive. Oh. And I was like, that would have been great because I actually love Geraldine. And her dying would have yeah. would have really evoked some emotion, like... Other than hatred. Yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> other than Diego, does anyone die? Does Diego come back to life? Diego does not. He's dead. Dead, dead. Moy dead. Moy dead. Moy dead. Moy dead. <laughs> <laughs> which is just so loco if you ask me ah uh, truly loco. oh my god <laughs> but so then no other like main character dies no just um darius's mom and geraldine's dad die they kind of become main characters but they're like not really and I've been hoping like some type of main character is going to die. There's so <laughs> many of them. You have to wait Please. till book 12, okay? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I will last that long. I'm Don't lie. Book 12? This is the longest series <laughs> I've ever read in my life. Oh my <laughs> I, god. I've only read trilogies before this. And mm-hmm. how have I stuck here? For someone that has big book phobia and you're literally reading like thousand page books, you're insane. Yeah. <laughs> With zero plot. No, there's no plot. <laughs> I mean, there's smut and some type of war, kind of. There is, I will say there's a time jump eventually. We get to the second year. Thank God. Okay, we get to the second year. But that's it. Wait. What do you mean the second year? Like of school? Yeah, of school. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. Yeah, so they finally get through the first year of school. Like they're all done. Uh-huh. In what book? <laughs> Six? Of course you had to ask, Carlos. <laughs> There's no way. Probably book six, yeah. Because is it? Book three is midterms, right? Yes, because that's Hell Week, The Reckoning. And then book four, I think it's again like, I don't know, two weeks. 
I don't think there's a time jump until book five and six. <laughs> time jump is what? The summer? Just three months? Yeah. No way. Have you read the first book from the boys POV? I have not. I I don't want to, but like I think that that's <laughs> such an interesting move to make that they would rewrite the whole first book from the boys POV Mm -hmm. and publish it like years after the first book as if to like kind of clean up the mess of like ooh bullying actually was more like sexual assault maybe they try to like write that to justify book Mm -hmm. one there can't be that much new information right it's like they wished they could go back and publish it as a dual POV but they're like no 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 this will be fine let's just put out this extra book anyway no one's gonna notice they're not gonna know we <laughs> no know it's gonna notice <laughs> they're not gonna know. a quote that I want to give a little shout out don't know what twin this is I never do but <laughs> she's looking at Darius's mom and she says, I thought I had a pretty decent rack, but beside her curvaceous glory, I was a pancake with a face. (laughs) (laughs) Ew! (laughs) I will say I didn't hate book three. Book one, I rated it a 2.5, which I thought was generous. Book two, 2.8, because I did like that they were kind of getting a little bit of revenge, even though I thought it was lame revenge. And then book three, just a solid three star because I didn't hate it, but I didn't Mm -hmm. like it. It was just very, it was a book. It was just a book. Okay. Uh Uh-oh. There's no way you rated (laughs) book one a 2.5 and you also rated Along the Razor's Edge a 2.5. No! Come for her, Carlos. There is no (laughs) way. Get her ass. (laughs) Like if that's the case, I think you should lower all the ratings for Zodiac. By like three stars. <laughs> okay. The rating was for their respective genres. Like you couldn't rate those books next to each other, but in their respective genres, that's how I rated them. There are four star smut books <laughs> that I would look at a four star <laughs> fantasy book and I would not rate those the same because next to each other, those are not four star books comparatively, but in their genres, mm. they are. Okay. Acceptable. You really did come for me, though. Oh, my God. (laughs) I was just so confused. So originally, my rating for book one was a two star. After this, I might lower it to a one just because I don't remember half of the things that happened. And I'm like, actually, that's disgusting. So, (laughs) And I like never rate books. On like a five star scale, I just can't do it. I, I record, I use Storygraph, I record the fact that I have read them and I'll like try to talk about them on booktube to get my thoughts out. But in terms of putting stuff on a five point scale, I'm really bad at it. They would be in the one, one category. If I had to, if you twisted my arm. <laughs> they got it out of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I have a hot take for my review. I will read my review, okay? Okay. This is book two. Why did I actually like this book? I was in physical, it's all capital letters, pain after reading the first book, but continued on to the second book immediately because I love torturing myself, I guess. Honestly, the first 200 pages were pure cringe and I was hate reading it. But after that, I kind of started loving it. I also have a, a smiley cry face emoji. (laughs) Now, am I still in physical pain? Yes. Will I be binge reading book three now? Also, yes. I rated it a four star. What? (laughs) Girl, early pop. (laughs) But here's the thing. Sometimes I will be like, oh, this is terrible writing one star. Other times I'm like, you know what? Fun time. (laughs) But was it fun? Was it fun? Ooh, book three review is... Four words long. This book killed me. Four stars. Four stars. What? (laughs) You are an insane person. Guys, this was December me. (laughs) I don't know. Wow. Book four. I'm currently in shambles on the floor throwing up dead. That was my review. Are you okay? (laughs) You have to tell us. I was going to say, you have to tell us the stars. (laughs) But here's the thing. I will never give any of these books five stars because they don't deserve it. That's why. This is your form of self-harm and I don't condone it. 
at all. I don't know why I'm choosing this pain. Me either. But I've committed and I have to see it through. For us as well. You have to let us know. I will keep everybody updated on book eight. Oh my God. (laughs) And nine when it comes out. (laughs) Jesus. Apparently book, people hate book eight. Even like the diehard fans. Oh yeah. Really don't like book eight. And I'm like, what (laughs) goes on? What happened? Apparently it's it's nothing, but like the amount of nothing is a new level. Like people- <laughs> A tale as old as time. Like even the diehards are like, this could have been 300 pages shorter. Oh and can you imagine God. as an author having enough words in you to put down 300 pages of nothing? I might just skip to the ending. That's what apparently people do. People (laughs) like do a hard skim to the end. Because they said like it's only the last 20% of book eight. That's wild. (laughs) And it's like a thousand pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a thousand and eight, I think. You could have done that with book two, honestly. You could have skipped to the end where that massive fight scene was. mm -hmm. Because it would have given you all the spoilers of what they did to them anyway. I rated book one a 2.5. Okay. Book mm-hmm. two, three, and book three, a 3.5. Ooh. Wow. Okay. So it's like going up by 0. 0.5 uh-huh. every time. That's what it is. Book five. It's going to be five stars. You got to do it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. I'm telling you. <laughs> if anyone recommended me a book and they were like, I gave Zodiac Academy book whatever a five star, I would never read a book that they suggested. Just out of spite. Crystal. <laughs> Wait, does Crystal rate these book five stars? I mean, they are her, like her all-time favorite. Crystal, this is her. She's got special editions. I will say the special editions are really nice. I don't know if I'll ever get the physical copies of these. Kindle Unlimited, if that's enough for me. Are these available in physical stores? We've got them at our store. All eight, plus the novellas. I was going to say, where are they... Um shelved in romance can you believe and i will die on the hill that zodiac academy is the Lacroix of romance there is like what does this mean there's like nothing there there's a there's a (laughs) hint of it like if you really Uh if you really try to taste it you can kind of gather that there's a little bit of romance in there Mm -hmm. like oh maybe mango yeah yeah but otherwise you're like but was it really mango? I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, when they did write a sex scene, boy, did they. Yeah. And do they continue? I did like the little Caleb scene in book two. Oh, it's when they're doing the hide and seek thing. In the forest? At the party at Darius's oh, house. And he okay, like okay, walks okay. in and sees that they just yeah, had sex and he's like all pissed. Yeah, seeing Darius all like flustered and jealous. I was like, finally, these boys feel something. Yeah, I think it also helps that like those were consensual. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I feel like those were the scenes where I could like almost relax a little bit. I was mm-hmm. like, oh my God, this is like the one time that everyone in the room is like on the same page and I could like release some tension and then I would be like, you <laughs> <laughs> be like, no. <laughs> Something horrible is going to happen now. Go back to the sex scene. Even with like uh, Tori and Orion? Darcy. No, Darcy. (laughs) You got a 50-50 shot each time and it's been wrong every time. (laughs) Every time. (laughs) Okay. Darcy and Orion. I ended up liking their romance a little bit more. But Mm -hmm. I would get out of it again the moment that she would call him sir. I'm like, once you sleep with him, sir Mm -hmm. is a no-no word. That's when it gets cringe. That's when I am appalled. I don't know. After a couple scenes together, I was like, okay, I guess I like them. But I, I've i never liked the teacher romance thing, even though I kept had to keep telling myself, okay, they're literally like at a university. They are above mm-hmm. 18, you know, okay? Because in my head, I was just picturing Ezra and Arya Ew. the entire time. And I was like, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I didn't like that romance and Pretty Little Liars. I don't like this here. Yeah. But eventually I do like them. I like them more in this third book towards the end. Yeah, they are mates, but we don't find out until book seven that they're mates. <laughs> yeah. Book seven. Aren't Darius and Tori also mates? Oh, yes, they're mates, guys. 
But isn't there a twist? Yes. At the end of book four, that's why I was in shambles on the floor throwing up, okay? (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Tori says no because they have their divine moment and you can like either decide, okay, yes, I want to be with you and then you can get the little silver ring in your iris or no, I don't want to be with you and then you get the black ring. And Tori was like, no, you did all of that to me, which, you know, justified, all right? Yeah, good girl. Was I on Darius' side a little bit? Yes. But – Okay, hear me out. I know, I know, guys. (laughs) After she says no, literally the stars are trying to kill them anytime they're close to each other. Oh, because they're star-crossed. We love a forbidden romance. And that's where the three-way comes in. It was pretty good. It was a pretty good scene, I will say. Caleb, Darius, and Tori all together. Oh. Because Darius and Tori still wanted to have sex, but they were like, the stars are trying to end the world whenever we get together. So they're like, maybe let's trick them. Let's have Caleb come join the party and we'll like confuse the stars. So there's just a a threesome. Yeah, and they go into like a cave (laughs) that the stars can't see them. The stars can't see them? What? How is that different from like a house? Like just be under a roof. It's a magical cave. I really don't know how it works. <laughs> I can tell you what, neither do the authors. Nobody knows how anything works in this world. Anytime you would give me a spoiler, I would look at Rose right in her face and I was like, listen to what you just said to me. <laughs> I promise I'm not reading this and thinking, oof, great literature. Mm-hmm. But there's just something that really. Maybe I won't continue. <laughs> Carlos, Carlos is just sitting there in silence, like he's been thinking about this for a long <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> you will actually like book four, though. I think you oh my would. God. I don't know. After finishing book three, I'm like, okay, I'm invested enough to where I want spoilers. I want to know what happens. But there are just so many books in the world that I want to read. And so I just can't justify the amount of pages that it would take to get the information myself. But I'm all for finding out about what happens because obviously by my reactions, I'm like, oh, my God, (laughs) Starcrossed? Like, that's kind of (laughs) crazy. But at the end of the day, to read a thousand pages just to find that out, that is time I don't have. If I'm going to read a thousand pages, I'd rather read The Way of Kings. Because there's actual world building. And speaking of world building, I feel like the authors consistently forgot that they were supposed to be in like a world separate from Earth. Because they would (laughs) make so many references. Like, why did the Fae listen to Eminem? (laughs) Oh my god! (laughs) Oh my god! I did not think of that. Yeah, they have Eminem, they have Taylor Swift, why Naturally. are they celebrating Christmas? Like, was Jesus there too? Yes, like- the Christmas thing was so weird. I was like, don't they like worship the stars? Why are they celebrating Christmas right now? The fact that they had literally a hundred pages dedicated to talking about fae STDs. Yeah, the Why? whole sex ed class. <laughs> it felt like an acid trip. I was like, what am I reading? <laughs> Isn't there like Pegasus glitter involved? Kylie thought. Kylie and Seth's just whole thing where he (laughs) basically lied to her that she was taking birth control. She thought that she was protecting herself. Either he was bamboozling her into thinking that it was contraception and it wasn't or it like did something extra for him. Either way, ick, 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 ick. My head hurts talking about this. Carlos has a migraine from the (laughs) But still might continue. (laughs) No, Carlos, don't do it. You have such a long TBR. Life is so short. Yeah, I won't. I have not (gasps) read more than half of the books that are behind me. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I don't think I'm going to continue. I wonder what the story was of like, how did it start? Because obviously now, like how we all found it, it kind of blew up mostly on TikTok, I think. Mm -hmm. How did that begin? Especially when they're self-published. Like that's Mm -hmm. a pretty amazing feat for it to grow this big. I just wonder like who read the first book and was like, guys. (laughs) I mean, I feel like that's the case with a lot of books now. They just blow up on TikTok. Just like one person talks about it and it's... We got to find that one person. Sit them down. (laughs) (laughs) The funniest comments that stuck with me on my video were one person pointed out 
that these girls are supposed to be from Chicago and they are being oh, like yes. walked <gasps> over. Like Tori's Damn. supposed to be this badass girl from Chicago who like steals motorcycles. And then the second they get to the Fey world, they're like walked all over and can only give people fleas. Like that's their yeah. badass <laughs> girl thing. There's a line that is like, Tori goes for a run and she's like, I put on my Nike sneakers and I went jogging listening to Lizzo. And that was like uh, a <laughs> sentence. She's like, I'm just like you. Four elements means nothing to me. I'm still your yeah. girly pop. Like, oh. So does Lionel come and like attack the school? Kind of. Basically, he does. So he takes over and he tries to expose the Vega twins and shuns them. I don't really remember exactly what happened, but has something to do with shadows. And so everybody decides they're going to side with Lionel. And he attacks just the Pegasuses, Pegasi. What is the plural of Pegasus? Just <laughs> them um, at the academy because he's like raging war on all Pegasus orders and all rat orders. There's a rat order as well. Oh, Jesus. oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he's <laughs> nope. <laughs> back up. I'm gonna need you to back right up. Who? <laughs> Not the rat. Who comes out as a rat? <laughs> None of the main characters. No one in the main group is a rat, but they just meet a couple of them that are. Using the guy that was trying to convert Xavier into like thinking mm -hmm. he's a dragon, he's using that guy to like do experiments on um, the rat order people. Are these life-size rats or like small rats? <laughs> You know what? I don't think it ever tells us when they like transform. Surprise. So I don't know. Surprise. <laughs> we're we're told something yeah. and it never comes back or is relevant again. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. Cool. 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 Also, the fact that they're all supposed to be fae, but the orders are not fae. Like right. a vampire is not a fae. And someone also pointed <laughs> out what is Medusa? Is it the the name a Gorgon? Yeah. Instead of using that correct term, they just called the order Medusa. 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 <laughs> yeah. And it's yep. like, but that's just one lady, you know? Yeah, like that's her name. <laughs> I don't think it was lack of research. I think it was just lack of caring. They were just like, these are words I already know. <laughs> Here we go. I almost feel like they thought that the reader would be like dumb or something. They're like, well, they won't know. Oh, yeah. The actual term. So we're going to call them all Medusas instead. Everyone knows that one. And it's like, God forbid I have to like look up a word or something. That would just be loco. Yeah. Am I right? <laughs> how how did you guys feel about the Spanglish though? In all reality, was anyone offended? I hated it. I was a little bit. I feel like at least some type of effort should have been put into it if he's mm -hmm. going to be... I mean, he wasn't a main character, but he was important, kind of. And the fact that they didn't even try. No accent marks. There was a part... The thing that, like, cracked me up was... The part where he's supposed to turn, like, really angry. There's a scene where he randomly, like, comes on to either Tori or Darcy. Oh, yeah. yeah. At the uh -huh, end. At the fair. Darcy. Yeah. Darcy. Yeah. You cannot tell me that this isn't straight from Google Translate. The, the sentence is, Eres una puta como tu hermana. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just thought it was bad because it, like, it just made it so obvious that that was, like, a diversity point for them mm -hmm. yeah and i was like if you're gonna do that like there are so many other ways that you could do it nicely or like not at all like it's just disrespectful i think mm -hmm. to do it so poorly and i was like you just didn't even need to add that in at that point like we have so many throwaway characters anyway what's another one even with the name diego that that <laughs> just works i don't need him speaking spanglish horribly for me to yeah. be like Diego is probably Hispanic, I think, maybe a little bit. Chica this, <laughs> chica that. Yeah, it's the chicas for me. I'm like, oh my God. Hey, chicas. No, no. Yeah, it was bad. A warranted death. How did he die? Um, She doesn't remember. <laughs> someone from like Lionel's posse kills him. Lionel like did this whole scene like... I would guess you would call it an illusion. I don't know. Where he made it seem like Darcy was kidnapped. 
And Diego saw it in the shadows. And he was like, come, your sister is taken. And then Tori's like, okay. And they go. And then that's how Diego was killed. He wasn't like a bad guy, but his family <laughs> is. Like he, I feel like he was trying to help Tori. I don't really know. Because Diego's uncle was like shady in book three, right? Diego's yeah. uncle was awful. But Diego was actually... He ended up being okay, mm. but the reason why he – I think it mentions it in book three that he, like, goes a little crazy. Yeah. Um, it's because his hat wasn't on, and I guess that really does calm his his nymph in him. I don't know. That's my final answer to the question. <laughs> we need a team of researchers to, like, fact check, <laughs> make a, a bestiary magic rules because – that's my biggest problem with this book. I will say that these characters are shapeshifters in the worst way where like characteristics about themselves change very specific to scenes. Like there's no continuity really. Is there like a scene or something that happens where Darius just like is like, no, I love my twin. I just, I love this twin. Tori. Not my Tori. twin. <laughs> I just love Tori. In book four, he starts to realize, like, why do I have these feelings for her? But he doesn't. I feel like until book six Jeez. is like, I love her so much. And that's when he makes, like, a sacrifice for her. Yeah. So it doesn't happen for a long time, but it happens eventually. You guys have a great point. This really should not be this many books. Cut each book in half and then just meld it with the other, and it could be a, it could be maybe a decent book. Like I still hate the writing, but just with how long they are, <laughs> I can't. I just can't condone the behavior. I can't. Is um I don't know how Kindle Unlimited works, but I heard a rumor. Do you get paid by book length? I think they get paid by pages read. Interesting. <laughs> It's just a cash grab. And that could be it, that they were just like, because apparently it was supposed to end at book eight. Like there was not supposed to be a ninth book, but they've mm. somehow managed to spread it, even though people are saying nothing happens in book eight. Like it's just filler. Because I mean, it's not like they that. have a publisher that's like, hey, we got to extend. Like these are conscious decisions that yeah. they're making. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, after our conversation... I'm honestly thinking about lowering the ratings. <gasps> you know what? Fair, because I'm about to go lower my book one rating. So, <laughs> as you should. You guys made me realize just how bad they are. This no. is really just a therapy session. I needed this. Now you're strong enough to continue. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> with, with all of that being said, I will be reading book eight, guys. <laughs> The moral of this podcast episode is I need help. All in all, I would not recommend this series to anyone. I would not. I feel like oh God. I don't know. Here's the thing. <laughs> I would not recommend this book, but have I recommended it to my book club girlies? Yes. Shout out to my book club. There's like 10 of us, I think, that have read them together. I think that's the only reason why maybe I've stuck around is like we're all just reading mm. this together. We're all in pain. But I don't think I would recommend it to anybody new, you know? Mm. I think if somebody came to me and was like, I'm looking for a bad, long fantasy book <laughs> to laugh at, I would still say read Crave instead. Because for me, like... Crave had these like incredibly funny moments. Zodiac Academy was just anger. Like I only walked out of it feeling like hot and wanting to rant. But Crave, like I actually was like laughing out loud in a way that it was like so stupid. References Eminem and Taylor Swift, if that's what they need. And Twilight all the time. Yeah, that book is very self-aware for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's literally, there's literally a sentence in the second book, I think, where it's like, Man, if I was reading this as a book and not as my life, I would think the author was insane. No <laughs> way. <laughs> it's like that self-aware. It's like looking you in the eye and being like, I know. If someone straight up was like, 
bullying trope is my jam, I would be like, look no further. I've got the one for you. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I would not go out of my way to be like, this is it. This is the next, this is your next thing. Shouldn't be anyone's thing. But here we are. (laughs) Here we are, but here we are. We did it so they don't have to. May I ask what your astrological signs are? (gasps) Yes. Yes. I'm a Capricorn, and I didn't appreciate that Kylie was our only (laughs) representative. (laughs) Oh, I am an Aries, and the only Aries in the book is Lionel. And I'm throwing up. (laughs) I am... Like the main characters, a Gemini. <gasps> oh, oh no. yeah. main character energy. I'm a I'm a Taurus. I don't know if there's a Taurus. Isn't that Caleb? Ah, oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Yikes. When I read that, I thought that was so funny because every Taurus I know is just like loving like loves a good plan like is just this like solid friend figure I feel like in my life and then when it came out that Caleb was a Taurus I was just like where where is the Taurus (laughs) how they just needed an earth sign I guess well at least you're not Lionel please (laughs) (laughs) the villain (laughs) the worst character (laughs) what houses do you think you guys would have been in or what one would you have wanted? I would have wanted to be in Ignis because I, you know, Avatar The Last Airbender, Fire Nation, please sign me up. <laughs> but I probably would have been in like Aqua or Air. Probably Air. I don't think I would because I'm terrified of the ocean and water. So I would not yeah. be in Aqua. But I'm like, <laughs> just those vibes. But I would want to be in in Ignis. I would want to be in Terra. Avatar The Last Airbender. Toph is my favorite character. Oh, I love Toph. I love Toph. So, yeah, I feel like Terra, Earth. I like Earth. Yeah, I think as an Earth sign, I would also be a big fan of Earth. I agree. I also think I would be a good Terra. Oh, Wow. See, but that's my thing. My red flag, I love a red flag. So I would be in House Terra and I would try and like change one of the heirs because who who was in house tara caleb right caleb Caleb. yeah my my other half your elysian mate (laughs) oh my god (laughs) this is meant to be i would have failed the reckoning that's actually more accurately what would have happened oh i would have failed the reckoning i would have been dead i mean you can fail without dying rose (laughs) (laughs) the water trial i would be dead true can you drop out do they let you drop out i think you can yeah because there were, there were students that failed the last test and they were like crying going to their families and they had to pack up and leave. Well, they got kicked out. <laughs> well, yeah, but they didn't all die and get murdered in these trials. <laughs> it wasn't the Hunger Games. I don't have a lot of confidence in my ability to do all that. But honestly, a Hunger Games style reckoning would have been way more on brand for this school. Oh, yeah. Agree. To have the weakest links just be able to like walk away and be like, shucks, that just seems so yeah. weird <laughs> to me. I don't know. <sighs> Plot hole. Just kidding. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Another one. Well, we fought the good fight, you guys. Mm-hmm. We did it. We made it. <laughs> I hate these books so much. <laughs> Where can people find you, Carlos? You can find me on Instagram at Kingdom of Books. You can find me on Instagram at Flower Reads a Lot and my book club, a very risky book club. And you can find me on Instagram at Lauren H. Writes, as well as our podcast, Control Your Shelf underscore pod. And now our lovely guest, Miss Carrie. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Carrie Can Read, as well as YouTube, I guess. I'm not on book talk. (laughs) (laughs) Let's be clear. Disclaimer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can find me on Instagram and YouTube only. (laughs) And Carrie also often fights the good fight. She will read series so that you don't have to, specifically Akatar. If anyone's ever interested in Akatar, she has a full breakdown 
of the mm-hmm. the chaos and the mess. She is wonderful. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for I having me. Yeah. Thank you. This was so therapeutic. <laughs> I feel so good now. <laughs>